does anybody really know what time it is? Uh, does anybody really care? <laughs> well, I hope you care. It's time for the old curiosity shop, and we're back on the kitchen counter. Gonna have some fun with some antique clocks today. But first... But before we begin, today's cup of coffee is brought to you by... Yes, the old Homer Lachlan Company and their Harlequin pattern, which happens to be one of my favorite patterns, and I'm happy to have one extra cup and saucer in the green that I love so much. And I'm going to be sipping on this hot coffee and enjoying it this afternoon. But let's back up now and let you see this collection of clocks again that I'm going to talk about. Now, I have to tell you, I must be a, a real pinhead. Uh, just, uh, oh, two or three days ago, I mentioned Ab at Time for Clocks, a gentleman who I have never spoken to. We, we don't, uh, we've never spoken on the phone, never met him in person, but we do watch each other's programs. And I sent some of you over to check out his very relaxing and enjoyable show on Antique Clocks. And what I should not have done was then two days later put out my own clock video because I am not a clock expert at all. I am a tinkerer at heart. And so Ab knows a lot more about clocks than I do. Any mistakes I make, I'll defer to him. But I want to thank everybody who checked out Ab's channel. I'll link him again here in the description box in case anyone is curious. But I'm going to talk about these clocks today. One is for sale. The second one is going to be for sale sooner or later. And there's one clock I wouldn't part with if you gave me a million bucks. Well, let's begin right here with a clock that will be familiar to many of you. Oh my goodness, I think Every mantle in the United States had a clock on it that looked just like this from, oh, the mid-twenties. Even up until today, they're still making tambour-style clocks. Well, not the Sessions Clock Company. They've been out of business for quite some time, but they made uh, oodles and oodles of these clocks. It's a very popular style. Sometimes you'll hear it called humpback. I think more officially tambour is what you'll normally hear it called. And this is one that is uh, a brass movement. It's going to date to probably the early 1930s. I haven't uh, done any looking up on it, but that's the style of the clock and pretty much the design of it. Now, some of you are saying, man, that clock is really ticking away. Why is it ticking so quickly? And why is the, uh, why can we actually see the hour hand? Boy, it's really moving. Can you see that? Hour hand is not supposed to move that quickly. Well, the reason why that clock is going to town, as they say, because here's the pendulum <laughs> sitting right here. The clock is ticking away because the the weight of the pendulum, which would regulate the ticking of the clock, that's not taking place right now. And the reason for that, well, why don't we turn the clock around and I'll show you why. And then we'll get it to uh, be quiet for a second because it's making an awful lot of noise. Well, this is the back of the clock. And of course you can see we have some condition problems. There's some flaking veneer uh, that has come off here. I just bought this clock uh, for, oh, less than $10 at a flea market. And it was sold to me as a non-working clock. 
as is. Well, you know, I like a challenge. So let's open her up and see what happens. We can see beautiful brass movement, and indeed it is going to town. If I hang the heavy weighted pendulum on, Okay, and give it a... Now that is how the clock should be working. You say, Scott, why do you have it running flat out? Well, <laughs> when I got the clock, uh, I'm gonna take this off. Over the years, these clocks, well, they get gummed up, of course, with oil and grease, and when a clock stops, the first thing many folks will do is go in there and just dump oil all over it may not be the right grade oil. They may even spray it with WD-40 or something like that. And the mechanism gets all gummed up, you know, with cold dirt from furnaces and nicotine and dust and all kinds of mess. And there are a lot of parts on these West Westminster chime clocks. And everything has to be lubricated and uh, as clean as can be or the clock will stop. Okay, so I didn't take it out of there, but what I did was blew the dust off and oiled a few important parts. We'll listen to that for a second. Okay. Uh, and poked around a little bit and sure enough, I was able to get it to go. Now, what normally happens is people will get in, they'll take the key and they'll wind these clocks as tight as can be, and then the springs, they dry that way and uh, the old grease dries up and the clock won't run. Well, I was quickly able to get this to begin uh, to run. And what you'll see here, uh, this is the spring which powers the chime. And this is a, a full Westminster chime clock. Now that's that spring. And the spring that you can't see, which uh, is to the right of it, that's the, the main spring that uh, runs the actual clock itself. So the two springs, one for the chime and one for the clock. I'm letting it go to town here because I want this spring to unwind as quick as possible. I don't necessarily want to wait eight days and a body in motion stays in motion. I'm gonna let this baby tick away until we get those springs completely unwound. And when, they, when that happens, I'm gonna be able to take the movement out and completely clean this thing. Now the tricky part, uh, we can see here, uh, Westminster A, and then all these instructions and things. Uh, you, <laughs> oftentimes, you see the rods down here, which are the chime, they're actually connected to the bottom of the clock, the base of the clock. They're not a part of the mechanism of the clock itself. And to regulate this, it can be difficult because you have to have it inside of the cabinet to do it. And uh, I did a little fiddling with this because when I first got it, rather than uh, Westminster chimes, it actually sounded like the theme from Dark Shadows. I thought Barnabas Collins was gonna come out of the closet and throw boric acid on me at any moment. Leave me alone! Please leave me alone! And I still have to get in there and regulate the chimes a little bit, but we'll Let's see if you can uh, hear some of it. Let me get the light. Adjust my light. Go around here to the front and bring it up to the full, the full one hour chime. Okay, here we go.
right now. You can barely hear the hour strike. That's what's happening right now. And you see how we could hardly hear it? Well, that's because one of the striking hammers is bent and it's not hitting the rod as it should. So I've got to still go in there and alter that. I might even probably put new pads, leather pads, on the bottom of each of the hammers. Yeah, that's what about what it sounded like when I uh, first got this puck. So I'm going to let it wind itself down all the way. Um, it's a mahogany cabinet. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine how many hundreds of thousands of these were produced in different styles uh, by Sessions and other clock companies. Most of these clock companies were located here in the United States in Connecticut. Uh, let's see. Oh, Sessions, the New Haven Clock Company, Ingram, um, Ansonia, Seth Thomas, and I'm sure there are some others I'm forgetting. But Connecticut was it was a hotbed of clock manufacturing. So um, we'll continue to let that work its way through, and then I'll do some, uh, as I said, some cleaning on it. And I don't know whether. I'll be, well, there's my light. I told you I'm having all kinds of condition problems with my lighting crew here. Um, and we'll see about that later. Now, the one that is finally ready to go and up for sale, and I thought I would go, just go ahead and do this quick little instructional video. I have talked about self-starting clocks before. This is the Brock, there I go again, Spin Start. <clears throat> now, this is an electric clock made by the Brock Electric Clock Company of Newark, New Jersey. We talked about this already. It is, it is in a mahogany case, which I have beeswaxed. Thanks, Ab, for telling me to do that. The rep wood or burr wood on the front, it looks just like wood. And the chicken tastes like wood. Now, see, there's my brain. Where did that come from? There was a rap song way back. Was it Planet Rap? Let's not go down that lane, uh, but some of you are going to remember that if you're as old as I am. Uh, this is actually uh, sawdust, wood pulp, glue, and everything, and it's, it's pressed. Uh, uh, bookends were made out of it. Oh, lamps. Clocks, of course. Radio cabinets. Inexpensive way to have decorative wood in the 1930s, 20s, and 30s, and they were still doing it in the 50s and 60s. And so, uh, what makes it a spin start? Well, we're gonna when we plug it in, nothing happens. Uh, so we have to turn it around and we have to spin it to engage the motor, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And so let's get it plugged in first. I guess I probably should replace that that Bakelite plug there. I mean, it's okay, but it's okay for me. <laughs> but a lot of people, I think, would be nervous with that. Um, got it plugged in, and okay, it's plugged in, and nothing's happening. Okay, we're gonna go in here. Oh my goodness, uh, and it says start, and we're supposed to be spinning this, uh, what it would be counterclockwise here on the back, so we'll give, her, give it a little spin, and it engaged quickly. Sometimes you have to do it two or three times, you have to just have the right touch, and away it goes. The arbor there is bent just a tiny little bit. We'll slide that little tin can back over there. And the clock is going to town. Now it will continue to run unless there's an interruption in the household current, current, and then it'll stop. One of the funny things is in the advertising, uh, not all of the clock companies had the patents for the self-starting clocks. And this was, the spin start clocks were a little less expensive, but in the advertising they were clever and they would, the spin was, no pun intended, uh, our spin start clocks. 
uh, are more beneficial because if the electric goes out in the middle of the night, the self-starting clocks will restart on their own and the time will be wrong. And you'll wake up in the morning and you won't know what time it is. But with the spin start clocks, when the electric comes back on, they will not be working and you'll know that the electric stopped. Uh, clever advertising. But that's what they would say. That's a beauty. You don't find too many Brock clocks. It is not a uh, common clock. And uh, again, this one we have its birth date right on the bottom, April the 2nd, 1932. I know it didn't focus there, but... April of 1932. Well, let's see. FDR was still in... Uh, I'm sorry. Herbert Hoover. Uh, was president of the United States. FDR was elected in November of 32 and of course started his first term in that grim, grim winter of 1933. So Herbert Hoover is in office. The Depression is in full swing. And uh, you could hear Happy Days Are Here Again on the radio, but uh, a lot of folks weren't feeling very happy when this clock was brand new. That's for sale in the old curiosity shop as we speak. And then finally, I want to share one more clock with you. Uh, one more antique clock with you. And this one, as you can see, is a bit older than the other ones. I've known this clock all my life. And it's been in my family for... I'm going to have to count the generations, but it's been in the family since it was new. And I'm embarrassed to show you how much dust is on it. It gets moved around a lot. Sometimes it's in storage, but I do have it out on my mantle right now, and it could really use uh, a nice going over with some beeswax itself because it is uh, pretty pretty dried out looking. Uh, this is a uh, an ebonized clock, and again. Ab was talking about the history of these ebony clocks. I'm not going to repeat it because he did a great job and he knows a lot more than I do. So if you want to know the full history of ebony clocks, uh, go, on, go and check him out. Uh, but you can see here, zoom in on it, that's called alligator hide. Can you see how the paint on the clock has sort of crackled there and gives you the impression of what would be the hide of an alligator. Uh, if you refinish clocks like this, there goes all the value, so you don't want to do that. This is paint here as well. That's the way these clocks were decorated. This was not an expensive clock when it was new. And the clock itself was uh, in my great-great-grandparents' house. Here is a picture of them. They were, that's my maternal great-great-grandparents, a Connecticut family who made their way into upstate Pennsylvania. And the only person in that photograph that I actually knew was the little girl in the front, my great-grandmother who passed away when I was in uh, high school. I knew her very well have very fond memories of her and there she sits as a little girl and then here she is when I knew her mm-hmm and this clock was on the mantelpiece in their old house for years and years and years um, and then it went to uh, my grandparents I always remember hearing it when I would spend the night at my grandparents' house. My grandfather used to love to hear this clock uh, chime in the middle of the night. And then it was in my parents' house, and now it's on my mantle. So count up the count the generations. I haven't really, really, I think with a lot of old family things, you don't really pay a whole lot of attention to them. Uh, they've just always been around, and it's just sort of part, part of the woodwork, so to speak. But this is an Ingram clock. Uh, it's an eight-day clock, so I still I still wind it every eight days and let you hear it chime on the hour. Uh, 
uh, there's the winding key for that particular clock. And as I said, it's just an old clock that's been part of my family for the longest time. I uh, suppose <laughs> that as uh, Ab was telling us, uh, millions of clocks just like this were made almost all in the Connecticut uh, in the Connecticut area well I guess that's it everybody thanks for taking this little historical walk with me through uh, memory lane and some fine old clocks if you like the little one here the little cathedral shaped clock from 1932 that's up for sale in the old curiosity shop right now Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. So long for now.